Okay, so here goes. Uh, this is going to be essentially the first of a series of mini series, I think. Who, uh, Pork Riley, past guest and friend of the show, joins me today. Paul, how are you getting on? Hi, Frano. Good, good. How are you? Not a bother. Now, we were chatting there just before we hit the record button, and we were basically trying to decide on what topics to talk on, and what we basically settled on was we didn't want to talk about fucking COVID or vaccines or anything of that nature, but we don't want to avoid it either. I mean, we want to have a, we want to strive at least to have a conversation about something deeper. So essentially, where do you get your information from? Because that's mm. relevant to uh, vaccines. It's relevant to just information in general. Like, yeah. I mean, the, the vaccine controversy that's going on at the minute, if there even is one, is um, in large part, as far as I'm concerned, due to people not knowing where they get their information from. They're either just towing the line, basically, which is just listening to the RT news and taking that as gospel. You've that on one side. And then on the other side, you've got people going down Facebook rabbit holes mm, mm. and being told that vaccines are mind control and yeah, all the rest. Yeah, of it. And yeah. Ideally, we should be somewhere in the middle whereby <laughs> we're not ignore, not completely ignoring both, but I don't know, getting our information from a reliable source that we can basically stand over it. Mm, mm. What, what does that sound like to you? Or am I hitting something or anything there? For sure, for sure. It's... Um I suppose when we all have access to the internet, it's, there's, there's infinite amounts of sources that you could go to. So it's, it's information gathering is, I suppose in ways it's a lot easier because we all have access to the internet, but I suppose because there's such quantity there, it's hard to find what's quality and what's just, I mean, conspiracy or what's clickbait or what's valid well documented research um and then even you know web uh, doctors differ and patients die so even among specialists you're oh, you're always going to have disagreements and i suppose that's where the interest and story is it's it's where you have two experts having a conversation and both of them learning something from each other not both of them trying to process proselytize their own position and try to convince one one or another of of each other's points to, to have an open conversation and to actually try and learn from each other rather than just shouting and fighting with one another and not really not really learning anything no i, I couldn't agree more and i think a fundamentally important part of getting that to happen is giving whatever the expert is or whatever the experts are enough time to have that because mm. if you get two experts on in a three minute piece on the news or whatever it is like the all there's room for there is sound bites of how you're right and how they're wrong yeah yeah so long form yeah. conversation i think is is fundamentally important to not the vaccine topic but every every and any topic definitely definitely um where do you get your news from would you think or your information generally is uh, it, is there a particular place is there are there particular people or is it a bit of a oh my missus <laughs> <laughs> she tells you what to watch yeah. um and all seriousness um a few a few different sources but i suppose i'm trying more consciously to to listen to people who've who've the opposite opinion to me and maybe not the opposite but the different opinions to myself because i find myself i could i'm easily just listening to the same kind of maybe conservative type of people and more cynical type of people and i get caught just listening to people that i i find appealing which is kind of it's unavoidable in ways because you're interested in what you're interested in so I suppose in ways you kind of you're always going to gravitate towards what what resonates with you but i suppose just to make a bit more of an effort to listen to people with, with different opinions and maybe the, the complete opposite opinion than, than you might have um so yeah it's, i suppose again as you're saying long-form conversations i find the best um long form podcasts and all uh, Rogan number one I suppose he's he's way up there for for um just open conversations with every type of person you could imagine. Um yeah I really I really enjoy podcasts. I think that's their 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 power is the proper conversation where where people are learning from one another. No, no very much so I couldn't agree more. And it's funny because you, you kinda you mentioned yourself in jest but I think that there's another part that I want to kind of uh, interject here in this discussion is 
let's say your missus is big into something in particular. Mm. It's okay then if you if you don't really have any interest or any knowledge of that. It's okay to kind of assume her position to a degree. Yes, she's yeah. into it. You respect her. You fucking you're going to marry her and all the rest of it. Like you know, you love her. You trust her. You think she's decent and honest and yeah. honourable and all that jazz. So it's okay to just quote unquote mindlessly agree with her. Yeah. To a degree. Do you know what kind of yeah. way? I think that's been lost a lot. People don't want to... People don't have people that they revere in their lives. That they can... Uh, outsource their opinion to is, isn't the... Or maybe outsource their opinion to because... like there's, put, put it this way. I don't know anything about corporate finance. Mm. But I know a couple of people that I, I like and I trust. And they know a lot about corporate finance. Yes. So I basically just go with what they say. Mm. And mm. that's not always wrong. Because you can't you can't expect to have an informed opinion on every topic, so yeah, you have to kind of outsource your opinion on certain things. Definitely, some of the time at least. Like, yeah, for sure, way. for sure. And even you know, even on that, it's great when you can hear two different, so say, specialists in the same field, but have different or disparate opinions. So listen to both of them having a conversation. I find that great as well. Um, so, you know, you know, two people, experts in their field, going head to head. I love hearing conversations like that. Um, or maybe not head to head, probably the kind of... Uh, uh, kind of polarised way of looking at it. But just having a, having a conversation where both people are willing to learn from each other. Um, yeah, yeah, and aren't afraid of a, you know, a small amount of confrontation. Yes, yes. Because... Jesus, I was chatting to a friend of mine only recently and he, it'll come to me, I'll, I'll have a think about it again, but he put something very succinctly in relation to... Uh, fuck, no, it's gone out of my head. It'll come back to me. I'll, I'll go back to it. Another thing, we're 13 minutes in, so we said at the outset that we're going to keep these to 20 minutes. So this being the first one and then we'll rhyme off the, the next one just to keep, give people a heads up. But is there anything else? Because we're, we're only glossing over this, which is fair enough. We don't want to get too much into the nitty gritty but actually it's come back to me what my mate uh, Chris Gleason shout out to Mr Gleason what he said to me about conversation in general he said that there has to be an element of not an element of adversarialness but there there needs to be a, an element of adversariness I'm not saying that quite right can you phrase that better for me <laughs> There has to be an adversarial element yes, to a conversation. To, con yeah. so to have a meaningful conversation, there has to be a certain adversarial element to it. Mm, Without, mm. as you were saying there a second ago, kind of going head to head, because going head to head implies that you're kind of trying to win, I suppose. Yeah, but, that's kind of fucking YouTube generation, isn't it? Uh, left versus right. Fucking conservative destroys liberal. Liberal destroys conservative. I don't know, there's kind of a lot of that. Maybe it's just clickbait, but a lot of that polarized thinking is man versus woman or whatever it is. is endless amounts of YouTube videos, um, um, one guy or one idea versus another idea, or, um, which I don't don't get me wrong. I completely agree. There should be a, a <laughs> focus of advers adversarial nature to, to conversations, but I know I also like the idea of. Uh, Ideas just uh, engaging with one another and new ideas being born from that. Um, yeah, I was only listening to someone recently. Um, it was one of Peterson's latest, actually. Do you remember the guy he was on with? Oh, he sent me. He link, mentioned uh, he mentioned yeah. the idea of ideas having sex, mm, basically, mm, and mm. the cross pollination of ideas. And I think Peterson said that's what a fertile conversation is. But basically, you bring something to the conversation. I bring something to the conversation, and through our interactions. A new thing is born, basically, sure. a, new, a new idea or a new viewpoint. Mm. But it, the two things sprung to mind there when you were saying about the the adversarial nature of, let's say, YouTube. You know, the left destroys the right, or the right destroys the left, or me men against women, or women against men. All the, all that jazz. One of them was Dana White, the president of the UFC, once said something. I'm par paraphrasing this now, but the sentiment will be there. If you were in a giant stadium and there was a hundred thousand people there. And at the same time, there was a tennis match, a soccer game, a rugby game, all the highest level athletes in the world. Basically, the Olympics is going on in front of you. Just the best athletes doing the most fantastic things. 
and then all of a sudden a row breaks out between two lads in the crowd <laughs> what's everyone watching <laughs> and there's there's, yeah, there's yeah. an element of that within us we love to watch a fight yes so i think that's a big part of why it's this guy crushes this thing or who's going to win between you know that that kind of polarization those those opposites colliding that head to head yeah we have a it appeals to something it does primal, it appeals to something, it, it appeals yeah. to something primal yeah, that's it i think you've hit the nail on the head there the other thing that uh you reminded me of was i've set up a separate youtube account okay so i have off the lead that's my youtube account on my youtube channel but i've set up a separate one which is called off the lead clips and I'm going to start clipping previous episodes okay. and just cutting out the three minutes best part of maybe a three hour conversation, a little soundbite thing, putting that out there with a clickbait title to get as many views as possible. And at the end of it, it's, you know, if you enjoyed this, check out the full conversation over mm, at the main mm. channel. So it's basically just in an effort to drive traffic um, towards the main channel because as you can imagine when somebody sees solo season three episode four they're not mad to click on it do you yeah, know kind of way it's yeah, not it's yeah. not it's not made to be that appealing and also jesus a four-hour conversation i'm not listening to fucking that yeah but yeah. if they just got a sniff of it it might yeah it might just it might just get them in but when i'm saying at the end of the video if you like this what i'm thinking of doing is if you like this video check out the video on this this and this mm. now the three this this and this is i'm thinking should be if you like this video check out man smashes woman or woman <laughs> smashes man yeah. and uh, try and like if there's if there's three main groups of people looking for content give each one of them something yes does that make sense so man smashes woman is probably the wrong terminology <laughs> but uh, <laughs> left versus like Watch, if you like this video, watch one of these three videos. A video of a, a liberal crying, a, a video of a conservative crying. And by doing that, you kind of get half the people listening hooked into one and half the people listening hooked into the other, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I suppose knowing that there are, knowing that those what am I even trying to say? See, this is the fucking the best and worst part of these kind of conversations because they're they're hard, but they're there's a learning there. Do you yeah, know what kind of way? Sure. Um, but I suppose what I'm trying to do with my own channel is to get it in front of as many people as possible. And in order to do that, you don't need clickbait, but it fucking helps. Yeah, you kind of need <laughs> clickbait. <laughs> <laughs> it's gas. Was I telling you about the blind boy episode that I did? No. This was uh, oh, fucking nearly three years ago now at this stage, but I had a uh, past guest and friend of the show, Pat O'Reilly, on. And uh, as an experiment in clickbait at the time, I didn't call it episode 10 Pat O'Reilly. I called it episode 10 Blind Boy. <laughs> and I put Blind Boy's image <laughs> as the thumbnail. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. Yeah, you allowed to do that? <laughs> yeah, the internet police haven't come looking for me just yet, so I think I'm, I think I'm safe enough. Yeah, but that was that was people's fear at the time. It was like you can't do that, Frano. You can't do that. Like, Why? What are you talking about? But the reason that I mention it is that episode. Like, let's say the average uh, views of one of those conversations is is a hundred views because I've I've never I've never went to promote them, so it's, it's low. It's between ten and a hundred views. That particular episode has seventeen and a half thousand. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. For doing nothing else other than calling it the Blind Boy Podcast and putting his <laughs> thumbnail in. And that's it. Like. But it just goes to show how well it works. And if it works that well for me, like that's how it works full stop. That's not just how well it works for me. Mm -hmm. So you can see why CNN and RTE and fucking everyone in between are playing into that. Like. Yeah, yeah, for because sure. Because you've got a choice. You can be kind of honest and honourable and legitimate and have no people notice you. Or you can be a bit underhand and a bit sneaky and a bit dishonourable and disrespectful <laughs> and all the rest of it. <laughs> and your fucking ratings under the roof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, where are we going? <laughs> yeah, it's difficult. It's fucking tricky. It's a lot harder than just a, a genuine conversation. And I'm actually going to call it at that. Um, what are we? Sorry. 14, 15 minutes in. I'm going to call it at that and we'll... What's the word? Reconvene? Is that the word? Sounds right. It is now. <laughs> <laughs> that'll, that'll do. And we'll check to the next one. <laughs>